Welcome one and all from across the country. Today is March 9th, 2016, and this is Mastermind Call number 116. Uh, it's been almost two years of doing these calls, and thank you to the two of you who are in the queue. Um, I'll just say it one more time. Everyone comes on the call muted out. If you'd like to actively participate, just hit star six and then hit one. Uh, we try to limit these calls to 30 minutes. Uh, they've gone as long as 60 minutes because we will we'll address each and every one of your questions. Won't go let anything go undiscussed. Today is a little bit different for me. Um, all three of my partners are unavailable today. Chad, our coach, is in the on his motorcycle in the jungle of Columbia. Uh, one of my other partners is having a little medical procedure done. And I think my partner Tom may or may not be on the call. I don't see him yet. So good news is I have all of you to myself. The bad news is you all only have me to ask questions to, but I'll um I think I'll be able to handle them all. So um no no um big company news we want to announce other than the fact that we've mentioned to you guys before we have a couple new lead sources coming and we're just weeks away from that. So all of our existing clients are always going to get first access to all of our upgrades and our new lead sources as they come out. So appreciate your patience. Um, one of my original mentors always uh, used to always say it always takes a little bit longer than you want to, you know, accomplish anything worthwhile. So it is coming. Thank you for your patience. And again, we have two people in the queue. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the first person. We've got plenty of room for others. Hit star six and hit one, and uh, you'll be next up. Phone number ending in 4705, you're up. Yes, hello, this is Rich. Hey, Rich, hey. thank you for participating. How you doing? I'm doing good. I just have a que two-part question. Sure. Um, you, you say as part of the script that you should ask the question, do you have any real estate? Um. Shouldn't you just assume that they do? Because if you ask that question and they say no, if they, if they lie and say no, we don't have real estate, then doesn't that end the call? Yeah, and one of the reasons I think, as you know, Chad always says he's not a big believer in scripts, you know, because there's so many variables in a probate situation. Um, I, when you get your leads, your data, the last known address, about 75% of the time, that is the real estate, you know, that's owned. But I think one of the one of the reasons Chad, I think he usually makes that his his fourth or fifth or sixth question. He doesn't lead with the real estate. He always says, right, lead lead with value, lead with their concerns, what they need. Um, and then I I think he um, I, I believe he includes that question. You know, I, I don't. Want to speak for him, but I, be, yeah, okay. It is, it's towards the end of the script, correct? It's a, yeah, it's about three quarters of the way down. Okay, I mean, I suppose you could rephrase it. So, um, I, you know, it, I, I I understand what you're saying. It gives him the opportunity to say no. I think by that point, you should have built enough rapport with them that they hopefully they'll be honest with you. Right. Um, you know, but what, ha you, what if happens you if they're not honest? And they and they and they lie just to get you off the phone. <laughs> <laughs> have, have, have you had that happen yet, or are you just no, no? I'm just I'm just uh, <laughs> uh, trying to prepare myself. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll be pleasant. I think first of all, you'd be pleasantly surprised that these people okay. tend to be the most motivated, cooperative, agreeable people you're going to deal with. Because you know you're reaching out to somebody who's maybe a thousand miles away, has a life of their own, and this just got dumped on them. So yeah. you're usually really gl glad to hear from somebody that can help them. I mean, you may want to you may want to rephrase that. I mean, if you have your data in front of you and you're concerned about it, um, you could say something like, you know, I see the last known address was 123 Main Street. Is that the real estate, in, you know, included, or is there other mm -hmm. property? You know, you could you could yeah. ask a little bit more generic question. The, the nice thing on these calls, you you'll – Often be not often, but uh, a percentage of the time you'll be pleasantly surprised that there'll be multiple properties. You know, there may be uh, you know some rental properties, and the record I've heard so far was down in the South Florida. There was a gentleman with twelve properties. Wow, so that was that was a good one. <laughs> yeah. Um, and j just to expand on that, um, also, if they if there is no real estate, um, my own experience in my market better than ninety percent of these did have property, but if there is no real estate, we've talked about this in our calls before, and we learned from you guys. We've had a number of agents that just, instead of, okay, thank you, goodbye, 
ask that next question, you know, I specialize in helping people that are the executors that handle, you know, the estates of relatives. And, you know, once the once it's settled, do you have any plans on maybe upgrading the home you live in or buying some investment property? Because remember, the person you're speaking to, on average, just inherited about a quarter of a million dollars. So what, what would you do? What would you do if you had inherited a quarter of a million dollars? Probably a pretty good chance you might want to buy a nicer house to live in. And you, you could say you as know, part I, of your service that that you you know you know a financial planner that they can use what you know once they get once the estate is settled and, and they and they receive all their their funds. Absolutely, like, yeah, 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 and yeah, and uh, but just keep in mind that that might still be a good buyer even if the right. real estate. It's the same thing. Um, a percentage of these, a minority, but a percentage of these will be proactive, and the property. You know, as soon as Dad got sick and they had to put him in a nursing home, they might have they might already have the property listed. You know, I, I would yes. say less than five percent of the time, but it's the same thing. You know, you if you are going to be more of a just because the listing agent has it listed, it doesn't mean that they might not have other properties. It doesn't mean that you couldn't, you know, put your buyer's agent on it or work with them as a buyer to buy something else. So right. you know, provide provide value and ask those extra questions and. Uh, you know, if you want to ask a more generic question, I, I think the point, though, is that, um, like Chad always says, don't lead with the real estate. Make that your last uh, yes. item of discussion. And hopefully by then that they're going to trust you enough that they'll be they'll be honest with you. Okay. Yep. All that right. answers the question. Any, Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Have you actually started making any calls yet, or are you just getting I started? just got my lead, so um, and uh, probably tomorrow I'm going to start. Okay, excellent. Well, you, you, the last few calls, you've asked good questions, so please come back next Thursday and uh, share, share your experiences with us thus far. I have will. You, have, you, have you been on the role play calls that we do? Yes, I have. Wednesday? Yes, they're excellent. Okay. I, I learned a lot on those. Go back and listen to those, and anybody who hasn't been on them, I would suggest you listen to, in particular, Chad has them all labeled, but um, when we talk about the probate quicksand, that seems to be the most common thing that people run into, like, okay, yes, there's real estate, yes, we want to sell, we're not quite ready, give me a call back in a few weeks. And we've had that come up on almost every uh, role play call, and Chad does a really good job of handling that, you know, and just asking extra questions to find out, you know, what their hesitancy is. And often it is the personal property. So if all of a sudden you can assure them that you can take care of that, you know, the objection kind of goes away. Got it. Makes sense? Yep. All right. Anything else we can help you with today? That's it. Thank you. Okay, you're very welcome. Thanks for participating. We only have one more person in the queue, so either I hope they either have a 20-minute question or we can get some more people. We have over 100 people on the call, guys, so please participate. Hit star six and hit one, and you'll be up next. Uh, in the meantime, let's go to the person who is in there. Uh, phone number ending in 3516. You're up next. Hey, how are you? This is David Rosenstein here in Tucson. How are you? Hey, David. Wonderful. How about you? Good. Hey, I signed up for the mastery course, and I have to admit I'm having a heck of a time finding the uh, videos and the course uh, information to you know, look through it. Okay. Um, well, the mastery is a live course, and, and um, if you go on our if you go to alltheleads.com and hit the calendar, it'll mm -hmm. tell you when the next the next course is. I believe it's the third week of March. Chad okay, usually that's, does that's this. Another. Okay. Yeah, Chad usually does them Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, it's usually an hour to two hours per session, depending on the questions, and it's usually the third week of the month. But if you have any questions, it should be there <laughs> on the on the calendar on our website. Okay, and no problem. You, For some you, reason, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, are you a brand new agent? Have you gotten started yet? Or I just signed done? up a couple of weeks ago. I ordered, um, actually, I just dropped ship three months with the uh, letters, you know, to the uh, awesome. person representative. Awesome. So they should actually they should all be hitting today or tomorrow, then I'm going to start making phone calls. Good for you. When you. And you know, when you get the letter in the mail, that's a good chance, you know, we mail you one. That's kind of a sign that your, your client probably got it. Good time to pick up the phone and start making the calls. Oh, definitely. That's what I'm planning to do probably today and tomorrow. But I was just trying to um, get through those classes. So it's a couple-month process to get the mastery uh, certification. I'm sorry, say again? It's, it's, so it's a couple-month process to get the mastery certification with the, uh, the – No, it's uh, not a two-week. 
No, it should. We schedule. Chad schedules one class a month, so it shouldn't be. Uh, he does have a March class coming up, so it's yes. it's a it's a one week three session. You know, about six hours worth of content. Oh, it's just for so one week. That's that's the part I was missing because he had mentioned when I talked to him on the phone that one time that it was all online. I could see the videos, and I thought that that would have taken care of the issue of getting through the uh, certification. So I wasn't sure that's what he meant. Yeah, no, he actually after the call's over, he does record them and he posts it. Um, but he po he sends a copy of the of the mastery course to everyone who's taken it. And and um. You're, and by the way, once you take it, you're you're kind of an alumni. You can take it as many times as you like. You can take it over and over again. Gotcha. Okay. And cool. um, I know my partner Chad uh, Tom is on the call. Tom, I'm not seeing you. I um, to unmute you. Uh, Skype and let me know what phone number you're calling in on because I don't see it. I was going to ask Tom to comment on that um, also. But if he comes on, I'll have him add some additional com comments what what uh, what motivated you to sign up for mastery i'm just curious uh, right off the bat well i'm an education type person you know with all those credentials over the years and so when i start marketing to people i got the masters in finance cdpe and everything else and so when i go to market to for other people that understand it's just another credential yeah no that it makes perfect sense um i always tell agents there's nothing in the mastery essentially with the if you're reaching out to the executors, you're you're basically reaching out to motivated absentee owners. You know, you don't right. have to know, know a lot. They have a probate attorney, but if you have any intention of of prospecting the attorneys, you absolutely should take mastery. It's it's pretty much a, a must because you'll oh, be yeah, able to speak the, speak the language of the attorneys. And it's kind of interesting when we look at our stats over the last couple of years, the agents that have completed mastery are about three times more likely to still be in the program a year later than the ones that haven't. So that extra level of knowledge is important. So, you know, congratulations on taking that step. And uh, and like I said to the first gentleman, after the course, come back and give us a review, please. Let us know what you thought. I appreciate your, your help. All right, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, we have two more people in the queue. Phone number ending in 4406, you're up next. Uh, yes, good afternoon, everyone. This is Conrad Fay. I'm out here in the Atlanta market. Yes, sir. I, just had a, I think my question was actually answered. My first mailers went out on Monday. I, I did receive confirmation, uh, the, a letter that came to my home um, on Monday. So just wanted to make sure that I, I can go ahead and start making the calls right now, right? Absolutely, yeah. And is that's a... It's a one-two approach. We we feel like it's a little warmer, a little less of a cold call when they get your letter first, and it allows you to kind of open with, you know, this is Conrad. Wanted to make sure you got my letter. Wanted to make sure you understand what it is we have to offer. You know, any questions? So, yeah, we when when we drop the mail to your potential clients, we we send it to you also. So if you got it, then there's really good chance that most of them got it the same day. So you you are you are free to start uh, prospecting. <laughs> That'd be fine. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'll certainly start doing that as soon as possible. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. And I recognize the next name in the queue. I, I'm Roger. You're up next, and I don't have to worry about any more callers. You can just take the last 15 minutes. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. I hope everybody else is doing well uh, on the call. And uh, I just thought I would uh, report on uh, the uh, – and I'll try to keep this as short as I can so you, somebody else can uh, throw in. Uh, the short sale issue that came up uh, uh, last week or the week before last has uh, gone away, and the uh, families decided to go ahead and put it on the market, do some repairs on the house to get it back up to uh, – to, the real quick summary of how I got to this uh, this point with this uh, about four or five months ago, it came up the, 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 on a list. The uh, parent was um, the uh, executor or the personal representative who lived out of town about 70, 80 miles away from town, uh, called him. He told me that uh, there was uh, something went on. Uh, it's a tragic death in the house that belonged to his son. He was been making uh, his attorney told him that we we're going to go through the six month uh, 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 notification period for that. 
there was a, a ninety thousand dollar note on the house. I went to look at the house and I said, you know, your house is worth about sixty thousand dollars with uh, with the um, uh, reclamation and there's something with uh, a, a tragic loss and I can't. I don't even know. I don't even want to know what was what, what floors were removed and part of the walls were removed and. Uh, and I said, you need a lot of work. You want to sell it as is, or do you want to do this, or what? What can I do to help you? And uh, the, and and that was really the way that I, I, I connected with him. Was I started off with uh, what what do, what can I do to help you? And tell me a little bit about your family. He was an organic chemist, retired organic chemistry professor at the college that I went to, and we connected uh, uh, with my terrible scores and just barely passing organic chemistry decades ago <laughs> at, in college. And that was another part of uh, connecting with, uh, with the uh, executors is find something that you can connect with them besides the, the, the probate and doing it. And so we had a very good conversation about a lot of things going on at Arkansas Tech and what was going on. And then we went on into the, the discussion about uh, the services that I offered met him at the house and and i said here's your choices let me get you uh let me get that uh so your choices are let it go into foreclosure which is what your attorney is recommending do a short sale uh on the property with the way that it is now or do some repairs on the property so that you can get uh, the mortgage paid off his objective was not to leave a an un um, an unfulfilled mortgage on his son's name, uh, and I and I and we're going to wait six months for it to happen. It came out six months later. His attorney uh, to, told him to really, you need to be letting this thing go. And uh, and uh, I called and his wife, who is an attorney in the, the town 60 uh, 60 miles, 70 miles away, called me one night. And she wanted to know what the heck I was talking about as far as a short sale and, 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 and wanted to know who in the heck I was talking to them. And then she started trying to understand what a short sale was on the property. And I said, it's where the bank accepts less than what is owed uh, on, the, on the property. La, 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 la. And she, uh, she started saying, well, I'm still a little confused. And I said, I understand. Warning and big lesson number two that I learned off of this again is never say to a personal representative that you understand how they feel. No, regardless of the context, there she just went off um, and started saying, you don't know what it's like to lose a child. Have you ever lost a child? Oh my God, I'm sitting there going, this is dead. I'm done, I'm toast at this point. And, uh, and uh, she said, I'll call you back if I need you. Okay, well, you know, there you go, Roger. You screwed that one up. And uh, <laughs> uh, so, so I, call, I called the, the husband back uh, the next day, and I said, look, I moved a trash bin out there. It's still going, you've still got about a, a $600 bill for the trash bin. I'm not trying to dun you. But if we're not going to do this, I need to get that paid so that uh, so we do it. <laughs> And the oh, excuse me, and the husband called me back. And he said, "Oh heck no, we're going to do that. We're going to we, give me the phone number of the two contractors you called. We're going to fix this up so it'll sell for a hundred and ten thousand dollars, and nice. <laughs> excuse me, and get it uh, and get it under there. And so I just kind of went, but I talked to your wife and." Uh, it was like surviving um, um, a strafing run by an F-16 and then another one coming in behind and dropping napalm on me. And she said she was in a bad, she was in a bad mood that day. Forget that, Roger. We're going to go ahead and, 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 re and repair it up to about $110,000 so that we can pay off the mortgage. Wow. That's extraordinary. Yeah, good for you, Roger. You, you've... You have been in the market. You're, tell everybody what I mean. You're you're not in Los Angeles or California. You're, you're in a in a pretty fairly rural, uh, fairly um, you know low population area. And I think you've done as well with this program as anybody over the last year or two. How long have you been with us? About a year and a half. 
Uh, about uh, about uh, about thirteen fourteen months. Uh, oh, I'm 13. in uh, north northwest Arkansas, uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas, Springdale, Arkansas, home of the Arkansas Razorbacks. We might make the NCAA this year. Our, ter- our football <laughs> team is is a, is a, it makes me want to cry. Uh, and the baseball team's coming, so <laughs> that's uh, that's well, our what, main entertainment. We do have two other people in the queue, but one thing I really appreciate you participating in, and Roger. A lot of our agents, once they start to do well with this program, they, they don't come back to these calls. And you show up at least once or twice a month. You've always got a great story. And one thing I think you've done extraordinarily well is Chad always says, you know, get your why in place and really come from a place of contribution. You know, the attorney is just assuming that there's no, you know, fiscal reason for them to do this. So he just assumes that that they shouldn't do it. You You ask a lot of good questions, and in the end, you know, they're going to feel better about this. Hopefully they won't have to come out of pocket. It ended up being a, do, a deal for you. So do the right thing and come from a good place of contribution, ask great questions, and, and look what can happen. I think it's a great story. Thank, thank you so much for, for contributing. I appreciate it. You're welcome, and I hope somebody else has time. Okay. Oh, you do. <laughs> get, get rid of that cold. It sounds bad, man. We don't want you to be the next probate. Okay. See you later. <laughs> All right, buddy. Thank you much. Appreciate it. Uh, phone number ending in 4041. You're up. Yes. Hi. This is Lisa. And I had a question. Uh, I just got my leads a couple weeks ago. Um, specifically that on the deceased, on the list for the deceased, there is the property is in a different state than I, what I was targeting. What would that signify, and meaning is it that's the only property? I just don't understand why it's it's technically on the list. No. Is it because? Mm-hmm. No, the, in, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Lisa. That, that's okay. a common question we get asked. We we provide the court, the in almost every state, the, the court records provide the last known address of the deceased. Okay. If, the, if the probate was filed in your county, then there's some, there's, the majority of that person's assets are in that county. The the last known address. Often, when people are facing the end of life, they'll they'll live in a hospice or a nursing home. They may have moved a thousand miles away to live out their final days with their relatives. So, just because it says that is the last known address, that doesn't mean that's where the real estate's located. The, the only way you know for sure is like the first gentleman. Um, and first caller today ask, you know, you got to ask that question, you know, is there real estate in the in the probate and where is it located? Because you really don't know for sure until you ask the heirs or the attorney. Do you follow me? So yeah. and those are usually those are usually good leads too because if if the executor's out of state, it's a great lead because you know they probably don't know any other realtor in your market. They need your help more than the people that are local. And if the heir, if the person who died uh, was out of state, then there's an excellent chance that, you know, their relatives, they, that's more common than not. They probably went to live with relatives when they got sick or, you know, or when they just, when they'd had enough with the property, you know, when they couldn't take care of themselves. So that's kind of a good signal that that, that could be a really high percentage lead. So you just need to call and ask them, you know, you can, yeah, and you could, like I said to the first gentleman, you could reference, I noticed the last known address was, one two three Main Street in you know in another town USA, um, you know was was the was your relative living with you at the end? You know where is the real estate that he owns? You know is there more than one property? And you know did you get my letter? And you understand what I could do for you? Just ask him good questions like that, and you'll find out. Okay, all right, that's helpful. Make, ma- make sense? Yes, it definitely does. So all right, sounds like we that. sounds like. Sounds like the theme this week is a bunch of people get ready to get started. So I, I've got all your names. I'm going to hold you accountable next week if you come on the call to ask you what you what you actually did. The, 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 the biggest mistake we see with people is relying too heavily on the mail, you know, Lisa. So don't make that mistake. We, we do have agents that are doing 20-plus deals a year that have never picked up the phone, but in most markets – you're not going to be the only one sending them a letter. So the difference between you getting that listing and somebody else is that willingness to pick up the phone and follow that letter up with a phone call. And so, you know, just take that action, and I think you'll be really surprised how appreciative the people are. 
No, I hear you. I've been making my phone calls, believe it or not, even oh, before I sent the letters, but um, I'm good, noticing good. that it's difficult to get a hold. Some of these, uh, the representatives, I, I noticed on my list are attorneys, <clears throat> the care of an attorney, so that's how they put it um, on yeah. the list. So yeah. it's just it's been a little bit challenging because I don't want to leave a message, and I use the MIT study to you know use those time windows, which has been a little bit more helpful. So that's okay. you know just Perfect. I haven't really gotten right. I've gotten some people on the phone, but they're just saying, oh, we'll have other members of the family moving into the property, so they're not really even interested in selling. And what would you do at that point? Nothing like you don't ask the next question like, do you have any other property? I mean. They just kind of say, well, I'm going to stop you because I'm moving those folks in. Yeah, I, would really ask a, I would probably ask a couple follow-up questions. At this point, Lisa, you don't really know for sure if that is an excuse or if that's accurate. So I would still say, oh, okay, great. I mean, in, and do you see this being a long-term solution, or do you think, you know, six months or a year down the road you might want to sell the property? And, and if you do think you might want to eventually sell it, I'd be glad to just do a CMA for you and, so all the members of the family know what the value of the property is. You know, I, I, there's no charge for that. What's a good time I could meet you out there? You know, try to ask a couple more questions and narrow them down if this is a long-term solution or not, or if it's just uh, a temporary thing, or maybe it's just an excuse that they don't want to talk to you right now. That's a really good thing. Okay, that's excellent. So thank you very much. Okay. I appreciate your time. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thank you for participating. All right, boy, great timing, guys. We're coming up on a half hour. We have one more person in the queue, so thank you so much, everybody who participated. Phone number 5406, you're up next. Hey, everybody, this is Steve Johnson. I'm in uh, beautiful Colorado Springs, Colorado, and uh, it looks like I'm keeping with the theme today because I just sent out my first set of letters. I think they went out Tuesday. So my question, um, are there any... Uh, scripts and any phone scripts on the site that I can find that, that will help me through that first step, you know, to start making yeah, calls. Absolutely. For, fortunately, even though Chad's not here, I know this one because we get right. we get asked that we get asked that all the time. Chad's not a big okay. fa uh, fan. Chad's not a big fan of scripts. However, I heard um, that. Yep. <laughs> follow, following the the second fast track video. If you watch the fast track, second fast track video, and even if you just want to fast forward through it, at the end of it, there is a seller's checklist and there is um, a script that he has recently written. Also, if you're a member of our of our Facebook group, you can go there and hit the upper right hand oh, okay. corner of the face, Facebook group, and it's listed there. So it's under okay. after after after. Um, Fast track number two, and if you can't find it uh, after those <laughs> those items, just send an email to support at alltheleads.com. Uh, Tom, okay. you're on the call. My partner Tom is on the call. Yeah. He'll he'll call, he'll call you back and he'll help you locate it. You're you're on the okay. call, right, Tom? Yes, I'm on the call, and actually, someone has requested through support that script, so I have the ability to send that to you directly. But we well, also strongly me. recommend. <laughs> is that you? That that was me. Yes. Uh, well, I'm, it, it's going to be on its way soon. Um, oh, awesome. The other okay. thing that, Thanks, that we that we strongly recommend <clears throat> is that you should listen to as many of the role play calls that you can. Jim mentioned that earlier, but there's a okay. lot of scripts in there that um, are used to you know to take care of obstacles that may be in your way. And, and Chad's real good at that, as Jim has said. So. Definitely listen okay. to a few of those. They're, un they're underneath the comments call. I will. Calls. I will. I will do that. All right. Well, Excellent. thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Stephen. And our friend Roger is back for one more. Roger's back for an encore performance. Go ahead, sir. Uh, just responding to uh, the the question that the gentleman last gentleman asked from uh, Colorado. Uh, the scripts and and Chad is absolutely right. I'm going to try to uh, give you my experience with uh, scripts and uh, what, uh, what to do. Make an outline of the services that you're offering so that you can introduce and lead with value. Because if you start talking about real estate, as was earlier mentioned in this call, 
you're going to you're going to be just like everybody else. And what uh, I have found effective for me is uh, start the value conversation of the personal property estate sellers that you have, the repair folks that you have, the title company people that you've got to help out with, attorneys that you have, financial planners that you have, trust officers that you can help them with after they they've get closed the estate. And just it do, and then and then lead into what is the biggest challenge that you're having right now, uh, and at that point, all of a sudden they they say, well, what are you trying to do? Oh my gosh, what do you what is your biggest challenge in the estate right now? Typically, as already mentioned in this call, it's the personal property, and you that that should you you should have the the network of uh, suppliers and and vendors to help with that. Uh, that thing, movers, uh, estate sellers on site, carry it to an auction house, uh, a, 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 a give a, a donation team and a trash team that uh, that that uh, is not going to be given away to anything. But that whole dialogue is something that you need to come uh, from organically, and somewhere in the in that mix, you need to find out a little bit about the personal representative, what they do, how they do, and make the connection with the with the personal personal representative about what activities they had with their with the deceased and what with the, what are the deceased like, so on and so forth. Those kind of conversations lead into much more meaningful and it disarms you as being an agent uh, looking for a, looking for a, a quick listing and a sale. Uh, that's what works for me and uh, I think that Chad wouldn't vary much from what I've said. He might have amplified a couple of things but just as a uh, rather than send you to a script or having somebody give it to you, develop your script, make it organic, put an outline. That's what I like to do. I like to look at my three, my, my trifold brochure and just the, these are the points that I want to cover uh, when I start, uh, when I start talking and how am I going to develop a rapport with this person so that I can develop a relationship with them. Um, I, I hope that that helps. Well said coach Roger. Thank you. No, that was great. That was perfect. And I like your, the gentleman earlier mentioned about, um, not asking a yes no question and sometimes you have to you know because you don't want to go you want to gain that rapport but at some point you got to find out is there something you can help them with but i love your open ended question um you know you can't answer yes or no when you say what is the biggest issue or obstacle that you're running into right now it requires an in-depth answer and it's not anything that anybody can really fudge on you're going to really get to the heart of how you can help them so that I think that's very well said. Excellent, Roger. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other any other words of wisdom, sir? You you were big help today. We're going to close the call out with you. Stay after it, guys. Make your three mailings. Uh, make your continue to calls. Build your uh, build your prospect list. Work your prospect list. Always add value on the front end. And I think you're you'll you'll. You may not get a, 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 a property on a, a listing, and you're probably going to uh, in the first two or three months. But if you you will get something that you did, and it'll be small. Be a realtor, but be a compassionate realtor, one that's looking to try to help folks, and uh, be a servant leader. That's basically what I try to do with my with my business. Thank you very much. Thank you, as always, Roger. Wow, great call. Thank you so much to everyone who actively participated. We had well over 100 people on this call. Um, I always like to end these calls by, first of all, thank you, everybody, for taking 30 minutes of your out of your schedule to be here today. And you did take the time. I always want to end these calls by challenging you. Take one thing, one idea, something that Roger said, something that one of our other contributors said, Go out and try it. Put it into practice in the next week, and please come back next Thursday and share it with the group. If you need anything in the meantime, support at alltheleads.com. Please come back next Thursday. We'll talk to you same time next week, guys. Thank you so much. Make it a great week. Take care.